So Harvest on Mission. This week we're looking at John chapter 10 verses 1 through 30. And I just want to remind you guys that as a part of this series, we're essentially following the vision statement as an outline for this topical series, which is we want to see all people walking together with God, bearing fruit for his kingdom. So there's two parts to that vision statement. We'll have kind of two blocks of sermons or sections of sermons. Uh, first, looking at the first part, which is we want to walk together with God. So how do we do that? What does that look like? And we're not going to try to cover everything, but we're just going to hit a number of things that I think are important for that issue, at least for right now. How do we walk together with God? And then the second part will be bearing fruit for his kingdom. And what does that mean? What does that look like? So this week, how do we walk together with God? We're looking at this main issue. First, I listen to Jesus and I follow him. As we see in John chapter 10, he describes himself as a shepherd. He describes us, his followers, as sheep. He's got a lot in here, but I want to zero in in particular on verse 27. He says that my sheep hear my voice and I know them and they follow me. We listen to Jesus and we follow him. You know, something that I think that has probably been one of the biggest changes in my own faith of the last few years has just been this idea of listening to God and responding to him. Before that, I think I kind of had it reverse a lot of times where I expect God to listen to me and for him to respond to me. God, this is what I need help with. Could you fix it? God, could you provide for me in this way? Could you fix this problem? And not that that's necessarily a bad thing. I believe that God does desire to meet our needs and even meet our desires and our wants. But he's God. He's not an on-call butler where I just can't, you know, ring the bell and he shows up. He provides for what I need when I want it. That's not the way it works. And we don't see that at all in Scripture. We see more of a God who's in love revealed himself to us. He invites us to join him and he rescues us from where we were to experience and follow him and join him in what he's doing. And so uh, I, I think the question really for us to ask is, how am I listening to Jesus? And am I responding by following him? There are so many voices out there and so many different uh, sources of information that, that we often will look to. And I just want to give you guys another pitch for the IEatThem.com. I hope that you find this resource helpful. Um, I've changed it up. And earlier this week, I've, I've added a new feature. And I've been working with a handful of people in our church to test this out and to work on it. But it now is, I hope, simpler and, and more helpful to you. Uh, there's now three parts, a morning, a midday, and an evening. And you don't have to do all this, but I want to show it to you just to, so that you can maybe consider adding it to your life. Because I think that maybe we need um, not just quantity time with God, but also, or quality time, but also quantity time. And, and so I've tried to make these simple, but also give you an opportunity to maybe spread them out through the day or maybe just inspire you in a way that you can develop something of your own. And so essentially what it is, is it starts off with a study it. And this is the verse that we're going to be studying this coming week. It gives you some questions that you can ask of the, te of your, of the text as you're reading it. And then there's a meditation and prayer section. I'm trying to make this really simple. But meditation is basically I'm going to take a verse and I'm going to read it over and over and over, maybe emphasizing different parts of it. And just let the ideas and the words just really saturate your mind. A lot of times just through that kind of repetition, we can get insights into it. And then to respond in prayer. And we're doing this by working through Psalms. So this, this week, it's all Psalm 77. Next week, it'll be all Psalm 78. And then there's a midday where I've just put in a, a worship um, song. And these are songs that have been meaningful to us as a church. And if you have songs you'd like for me to put in this rotation, I can give it, I can put it there. And then the evening, 
uh, more of an extended reading along with the Bible Project video that goes with that book of the Bible, and then a time for prayer that's very simple, just thanking God for the things of the day and then praying for one another. And, and I've found that this has been a very helpful thing to me in my, my walk, just spending a little bit more time, just uh, not, not in, 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 you know, bulk of time once a day, but, but smaller, shorter times, multiple times during the day and, and getting different approaches to prayer and different approaches to, to scripture. Uh, different approaches to worship. It's been a helpful thing to me, but the bottom line really is about listening to Jesus, letting him be the input to us. And, and again, what are the other inputs? Because obviously there's so many in our world. We've got voices just in our own lives that, that are telling us things. We've got people, we've got the media, we've got advertisers and marketers, all these people telling and things and voices telling us what to believe, what to think, what to do, what gives us value, what's important, all those kinds of things. Are they from God? Are they from Jesus? Or are they from something else? Which is another verse that I want to highlight from John 10. Jesus couldn't make it more stark in his contrast between the two voices. The thief comes only to steal and kill and destroy. I came that they may have life and have it abundantly. Brothers and sisters, I think the question often is, do I believe that? Do I believe that Jesus will give me life? That he will give me abundant life? Or am I believing all the other voices in my, that are coming to me, trying to take me to a different path? And of course, we need to realize when that thief comes to us, he doesn't knock on your door and say, hi, I'm the thief and I'm here to steal, to kill and destroy your life. He doesn't do that. Of course, he presents it in a way that looks appealing. But brothers and sisters, we need to believe what Jesus says, that he is a good shepherd and that he has come to give us abundant life. I believe even before the next life, even now, today, even in the midst of hardships and trials and difficulties, sickness, all those kinds of things. But I have to be listening to him. So I want to encourage you guys, maybe in your groups, you can discuss how are you listening to Jesus? What does your practice look like? Is it a once a week thing where you're just reading a little bit and then moving on? Is it maybe you just listen to sermons now and then or just worship music? Or are you letting Jesus be the dominant voice in your life speaking to you? And I, I would encourage you, if you don't have a plan right now, on how you're spending time with him, that I want to encourage you, just go ahead and do the whole IATHEM.com routine. The morning, the midday, in the evening. And then maybe with time, you can adjust it, find some things that work for you, but just go through that process. I'd really encourage you to do that. And let him be the voice that's talking to you, and you respond to him. Not the other way around, where I wait till I have a need, I go to him, expect him to listen, and expect him to respond to me. Jesus, what do you have for me right now in Psalm 77? And the next week, Jesus, what do you have for me in Psalm 78 or whatever it might be? And the other thing that I just love about this concept that we've kind of just sort of stumbled into is that when we're doing this together, when we're all reading from John 10 this week, when we're all following the same plan, we are quite literally on the same page. We are quite literally walking together with God. And I just love that. And I love the synergy that comes when I have conversations with those of you that I'm meeting with and talking with now and then, that our minds are hearing from God in very similar kinds of ways. We're asking similar kinds of questions. We're getting help along the same lines to encourage one another and to push each other along in the direction that Jesus wants to go because I want to listen to him 
my good shepherd, and I want to follow him because I believe that in doing that, I'm going to receive the abundant life that he has for me today and tomorrow and the next day and, of course, into eternity.